Hello, this is Justin Williams with the Wolfpacker Podcast. I'm joined today, as always, by co-host and editor of thewolfpacker.com, Matt Carter. And today, we are going to talk about something that I know a lot of you have been waiting for. Wolfpack basketball is back. Today is Tuesday, November 9th. And yes, the men's and women's basketball teams start their 2021-2022 basketball seasons tonight. Uh... The women play South Carolina, top five matchup in Reynolds Coliseum tonight. The men start off their regular season with Bucknell at 8 p.m. Eastern time on ACC Network Extra. The women will be on ESPN, so a lot easier to watch that game if you're not able to make both of them. But we'll give us a good look at what the teams are about this season, a fresh look at the new look rosters, some new pieces on both the men and women's teams, although the men's team is going to be looking a lot different compared to the women's. But before we get into talking about Wolfpack basketball, um, I'd like to remind our viewers and listeners to subscribe, rate, and review this podcast wherever you listen to us. We're on Apple, Spotify, Google Play, everywhere you listen to podcasts. Plus, please, please, please remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's the Wolfpacker YouTube channel. It helps us out tremendously. So if you haven't already, you're a loyal listener, please just head over to the Wolfpacker YouTube channel. Hit that bell button. That'll subscribe you to all of our fresh content coming out You know, almost daily, it seems like, now that we're in crossover season here, Matt. And again, one last reminder, if you haven't listened to the past two podcasts, we've been starting to plug the new website. We're in, the Wolfpacker has joined the On3 Network uh, it's still the same website, so if you search thewolfpacker.com in your uh, search bar, it'll take you to the same place, except it's just going to be a little bit new look of a website. So head over there and take advantage of a great deal they have going on right now. One dollar unlocks one year of premium subscription to the On3 network, including the Wolfpacker. So take advantage of that deal today while it's still around. That is an awesome deal. Not many things you can buy for a dollar these days. All right, Matt, so we'll start with the men's basketball team, even though they have the less sexy matchup tonight, because, you know, if we were going to start with great season openers, I think you got to look at the women's game as, you know, that could be one of the better games in women's basketball this year. We'll get to them. We'll touch on the Wolfpack women, of course, because, you know, they're a national title contender. Don't know if we can say the same about the men, Matt, but... Is this an opportunity for the men's program to get back to the NCAA tournament for the first time since 2018? Of course, I know that seems a little bit... Not not entirely fair, right? Because the pandemic caused everybody to miss the 2020 NCAA tournament, and then NC State falls short of making the tournament last year. Um, Or, excuse me, and then NC State missed the tournament the year before the pandemic, but barely they were one of the first, you know, four or eight teams out. So, Matt, do you think that getting back to the NCAA tournament is a reasonable measuring stick for how this team could perform this year? Does, is this what's the ceiling for this team? What, what do you what do you think is the absolute ceiling for this team? Just based on what you saw, you went to the exhibition last week, so uh, you've been able to see the team in person already what what are your thoughts yeah i don't know i think it's too early to say to be honest with you and i think that i'm not just trying to put a cop out on nc state i think that's the case for probably 90 plus percent of the 350 teams in college basketball now we're in a new era and it's probably been an era for a while now where it is a um a year-by-year proposition And they're going to be teams that you see in the preseason top 25 not make the NCAA tournament. It's just going to happen. That's just just the fact of life. Um, And they're going to be teams that were picked. Maybe they might. They're probably going to be a team picked 10th or worse in the ACC in the preseason to get a buy or a double buy. You just don't know how it's going to play out. Um, So do I think this NC State team could be an NC? Team, possibly, possibly. I don't know if I would set that as a bar, but possibly. I think it's just going to, it all depends on how pieces fall into place, how healthy the team is. I think that's a, you know, there's a big, big X factors that are impossible to predict. And, you know, I do think this is a team that's going to have ups and it's going to have downs. I don't, I don't see 
you know, a team that's going to be consistently struggling all year long. And I don't think I, I, from what I saw in the exhibition game, I don't think I'm looking at a team that's going to be 15 and five in the ACC or something like that either. I think it's going to be a team that has ups and downs, which is like most college basketball teams. You know, one of my big pet peeves are people like, oh, look at how bad that loss is in December for a team X. Well, yeah. Wait till the end of December and you won't be thrown stone from a glass house, right? Because just about every team, is, most teams are going to have a couple of those losses, one or two of those losses where you're just going, you know, scratching my head for those who are listening and data watching. So um, that's just a fact. Uh, that, that's just the truth. It's the reality of where we are in college basketball. And it's a team that may look good in November, December, may not look good in January, February either. So... It's going to be a, a week by week, month month by month proposition. But to, to go back to the original question, I, I just I think there's the potential to be a tournament team. I do, but it's going to require Manny Bates staying healthy. It's going to require Greg Gant getting healthy and making a contribution. It's going to require Casey Morsell making a jump now that he's out of Virginia and at NC State, perhaps a better fit. It's going to require Tequavion Smith. You know, having more ups than downs as a streaky freshman. It's going to require Cam Hayes making a nice jump. Sebron making a nice jump from freshman year. So a lot of things have to fall into place. Well, I mean, you know, I think you could say the same for a lot of teams in the ACC. I think you go up and down, you know, the preseason projected order of finish. Duke, the popular pick to win the ACC. I think Coach K's retirement tour may have something to do with that. Although... The Blue Devils will be talented. Of course, they bring in another top two, top three recruiting class in the country. You know, your typical uh, new delivery of a handful of five stars. Combine that with a few returning pieces. You can understand why Duke is a preseason favorite. But it also says something about just the entire state of the ACC and just how much production really is returning this year or, or a lack of production really returning to the league this year because Duke is a team that you know had to play had to play on uh, almost had to play on Tuesday of the ACC tournament this year um, had things gone just a little bit differently and of course they had their early exit from the ACC tournament because of the COVID-19 uh, positive test in their time in Greensboro, but they would have had to win the entire ACC tournament to make it to the NCAA tournament. That's a weird spot for Duke to be in, but they end up finishing, I forget their specific finish in the ACC last year, Matt. Maybe, I think it was 10th. I think they played Louisville in that 7-10 ACC game. So that means they jumped nine other teams that finished better than them last year, even though, you know, they still lost some talent from last year. I know they've got Mark Williams coming back, Jeremy Roach. Wendell Moore, a lot of those guys, but you know, I think that's telling in and of itself that Duke is the preseason favorite in this ACC. You know, you look at a team like Virginia, consistent contender in the in the ACC. They're ranked 25th in the preseason AP poll. A lot, I mean, you look at their roster; it's not very encouraging, but you kind of have to trust that Tony Bennett's going to do his thing. And you've got teams like UNC bubble teams last year projected to finish in the top four, so. I really think the league is wide open in and of itself. If NC State can just focus on itself and put together a productive season, you know, let the chips fall where they may, and, and we'll see where the Wolfpack ends up finishing up when it's all said and done. But let's talk about this non-conference slate ahead of NC State, Matt, because you've, you've been one to point out that, yes, maybe it's not filled with blockbuster names, although you have some you know top 10 matchups scheduled in the Barclays Center against Purdue, and you have your... Your Big Ten matchup against Nebraska, although Nebraska, you don't really know what you're getting there. There are some quality games on the non-conference schedule, but where you really like it is kind of the play on numbers. Can you can you get a few quad two wins in the non-conference slate over teams that might not have the big name, but will end up having the resume when it's all said and done in March? Um, do you think that kind of plays into the pack's hands, Matt? Because I feel like you know, the one thing that you can say, I mean, there's several things you can say about Kevin Keats, but now going into his fifth season in Raleigh, you know, Kevin Keats has had a really strong track record against just beating teams he's supposed to beat in non-conference play. His style, aggressive defense, 
create turnovers, um, you know, limit turnovers on your own end, win the turnover margin, score in transition. That seems to work against you know inferior, athletically capable rosters. Maybe outside of the Power Five when you're in the non-conference slate. So, do you think this is maybe a chance for NC State to capitalize on a non-conference schedule before? You know, going into the ACC gauntlet, which you never really know what you can expect out of that. Yeah, you know, Joe Lenardi put out his first bracketology, which is, you know, for what it's worth, right? It's not worth a lot. It's just a, it's just something for fun. But Hey, toilet paper is expensive these days, Matt. Yeah, <laughs> fair point. Uh, five non-conference teams were in the NCAA tournament, and a sixth would have been had Oklahoma State not uh, had it, you know, they were banned from last year's tournament, appealed it. While the appeal was being heard, they were allowed to play. That appeal has just recently been denied, so they will now be banned from this year's NCAA tournament. Um, if that wasn't the case, that would have been six of the 11 non-conference opponents would have been in Joe Lenardi's initial bracketology. That doesn't even include Louisiana Tech who's supposed to be a pretty nice team. That does not include Nebraska, who you mentioned from the ACC Big Ten Challenge. So they, it is an opportunity, but also a, a bit of a minefield. Um, I don't think the Bucknell game on on Tuesday, the opener, is one of those games, landmine games. That, that one should be fairly uh, comfortable. But, you know, the game's like Colgate. Right. On wood. Yeah. Colgate, if, you, if you're losing to Bucknell, then forget everything I said at the beginning of the podcast about that uh, and just go with the <laughs> worst case scenario. But um, Colgate, who they play Saturday, game two, right off the bat. Um, Wright State is another great example. Those are teams that are going to be there that 13, 14, 15 potential seed. Texas Southern's another that has a real good chance to win their conference tournament. Uh, and get in in one of those 15, 16 seed games, that you have to be careful. And But if you win those, you know, they should play well on the committee. It is a smart schedule. And I'll add, people kind of need to get past brand names now in college basketball, right? Yeah, Duke, sure, UNC, sure. But, I mean, look, both those teams stunk last year, you know. Kentucky, right. which, which, which Kentucky that good last year? I can't remember, but I don't think they were that good last year. Um, no. So, you know, Gonzaga held up its end of the bargain. UCLA is a brand name, but that was a Cinderella run to the uh, title game uh, or Final Four was it last year. Baylor won the championship. That is not a college basketball brand name. So it, it's strictly a year-to-year proposition. And so when you evaluate the schedules, yeah, I know it's hard for fans to get into the nitty gritty of every team, but uh, that's really the best way to do it to appreciate what's a good schedule and what's not now. Is it safe to say that Manny Bates is the most important player on this team to stay healthy for the Wolfpack moving on the rest of the year? You know, just based on mm-hmm. in terms of just overall wins, because you know you see the exhibition game, Kevin Keats obviously. You know, if you've watched any of his post game podcast, says that's a coach's decision leaving Manny Bates out. He's talked about load management already. He was talking about that way before the exhibition game for Manny. You know, just keeping his his minutes limited before the regular season stretch. Now he does insist that Manny's going to be ready to go tonight uh, against Bucknell. We'll be playing tonight. We will see. I imagine that will be the case. Um, but you know, Manny Bates. You just look at. Not only his production, what he does on both ends of the floor, he really became you know, an offensive threat last season. He's been working on his jump shot. I'd imagine the offensive game continues to improve this year. But just also what he does on the defensive end, I mean, that's basically not something that can be replaced by anybody on this NC State roster because he's one of the best shot blockers in the nation. And Kevin Keats, the way he plays defense, the way he wants his guards to be aggressive, pursuing deflections, you need an elite rim protector to protect against you know just aggressive play from the guards because there's going to be slip you know cracks in the defense that'll allow some players from the opposing perimeter to get to the bucket um 
and then you don't have depth really behind him. That's that's really the main problem. You don't have a reliable big after, at least you know, sitting here in November 2021, it doesn't seem like there's a reliable big you can slide in right behind Manny Bates. So, you know, what would you if you're an NC State fan? What would you prepare yourself for in just terms of what to expect from Bates? And how big of a role do you think he's going to play? You, you know what he's going to do on the defensive end, but how much of a feature player do you think he's going to have to be on the offensive end for the NC State team to really start, you know, getting some momentum and getting enough wins to make it to March? Uh, to answer your original question, is Manny Bates healthy is the key to everything? Yes. And that's the simple answer. I mean, it kind of, look, his health and Bobby Holland's health I mean, maybe Cam Hayes' health. They can't lose any of those three. If they do, they're in a world of trouble. Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, Gavin Keats has had some bad luck on the injury front. He's really had some tough luck during his tenure as a coach at NC State that sometimes gets forgotten. Uh, so maybe he do, right? Maybe he do for some good luck. Um, but, yeah, no Manny Bates, and it's not a tournament team. As simple as that. I mean, that's the bottom line. They cannot do what they want to do defensively without that. Um, so, yeah, I think that it, it, it's everything. That's the easiest way. You just, I mean, they, they're going to be over-aggressive guarding their perimeter. That's Kevin Keese's style. That's how you get the steals and deflections. And to do that, you need a rim protector. And there's only one rim protector on this team, so. Yeah, I, I agree with the decision to hold him out of the exhibition game. No, no reason to play him when he's that important. But, yeah, he's a big deal. He's a huge deal. Well, uh, it, hope hopefully uh, the Wolfpack health department within the men's basketball team has stocked the fridges with plenty of the milk, strong bones for everyone, strong muscles. You know, try to keep injuries at a low this year. I think you said it best, Matt. There's about... There's three guys on this team that I think if they were to be, you know, go down to injury or miss time for whatever reason, it would be devastating to this team just because, you know, it, it has the makings of a team that could have enough depth to, to Kevin Keats's liking. I know he likes to, you know, play a deep bench, although I think that's a little bit overplayed in the preseason. You know, it seems like every preseason we're talking about, oh, Kevin Keats has a roster that can go 10 deep, 11 deep. He's going to go that. No, you get into ACC play, he's going seven or eight deep. Okay. But there are options. With that said, Hayes, Helms, and Bates, if they're healthy, they're playing at least 30, if not 40 minutes a night. Um, you know, we'll see. I think this is going to be a defensive NC State team. If, if NC State is fully healthy, I think it can be – an above average defensive team in the ACC. We'll see where it can be offensively. It was a pretty good perimeter shooting team last year. Let's see if that trend continues. You've got some shot makers on this roster. Plus you add, you know, Terquavion Smith, Casey Morsell. Can he become a reliable perimeter shooter from this team? The transfer from Virginia, his numbers weren't particularly impressive in Charlottesville, but maybe it's just a change of scenery, a change of system that's needed to crack his potential uh, we've got a few more minutes here before we wrap up this podcast, so let's briefly touch on the women's basketball game coming up. Obviously, special season for them coming up. Favorites to repeat as ACC champions. It would be three in a row if they were to win the ACC tournament again this year. Starting the season off with a blockbuster game, primetime, ESPN and Reynolds against South Carolina, a team that is another national title contender. The Gamecocks will be looking for their revenge against the Wolfpack after NC State went down to Columbia last year and shocked the Gamecocks, uh, handing them their first loss of the season when they were ranked number one. So uh, no Jada Boyd is the is the main, I guess, story of tonight, or at least going into the game. Um, key contributor, sixth person of, of the year in the ACC last year. She's just a great spark plug off the bench and – you know, rebound and scoring machine down in the post. She's going to miss a little bit of time to begin the season. Looks like Kayla Jones is going to be ready to go, although she might see some limited minutes as, you know, she kind of gets warmed back into the season with, you know, a little bit of injuries going into the year. So we'll see what this new look roster for NC State looks like. Um, we're running out of time here because Matt has to go to a football press conference here momentarily, which 
you know, that's a great way to just kind of summarize this podcast. It's like when NC State's having this great of a football season, it's just so weird to talk about basketball early November it's like basketball season arrives. If you're having a bad football year, it's kind of like, ah, oh, new beginning. It's nice to talk about basketball. But with so much on the line this Saturday, NC State, Wake Forest, big game, it, it kind of takes away from some of the excitement of the ba- the start of basketball season. But it will be nice. It will be nice to see the red and white back on the hardwood tonight. So we'll be tuning in. We'll have some more basketball content here shortly for you once the games start and we can actually have some things to analyze and talk about as opposed to the months-long previews that we've had for the basketball season here over the summer. That's going to do it for this podcast. Remember to subscribe, rate, and review this podcast wherever you listen to us, Apple, Spotify, Google Play. Please also subscribe to our YouTube channel, the Wolfpacker YouTube channel. Give this video a thumbs up and drop a comment. You can also follow us on social media, at the Wolfpackers, our main account on Twitter. You can follow me personally, at Justin H. Will on Twitter. Give us a like on Facebook, NC State Wolfpack on the Wolfpacker.com. And remember, take advantage of that special deal with the On3 network right now. Remember, the Wolfpacker is now a part of the On3 network. Still the same website name, so if you go to the Wolfpacker.com, you'll still be on our page. It's just going to have a little bit new look to it now that it's part of the On3 system. But $1 gets you one year of premium subscription to the On3 network and the Wolfpacker.com. So take advantage of that deal while it's still here. Again, that's going to do it. For Matt Carter, this is Justin Williams, and this has been the Wolfpacker Podcast.